thank you very much to James again um, I've been on his channel today taking some little videos off because obviously he there's part of his harvest there he is there so I said to, I spoke to him the other day but we didn't particularly have a very good connection we did talk for a while but for him, me he was it but 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 he isn't on his messages so anyway we're going to talk at the weekend but um yeah i put this little video together because jay sent me another little masterpiece anyway i hope you enjoy thanks very much james oh yes this is his channel there's his channel I thought as a topic, I would talk about life and death um, with the intention here that it will hopefully allay people's fears. We're in a realm where there is one certainty for anything that is living, and that is the separation of spirit from matter, what people refer to as death. Now, for a, I feel the best explanation with regard to this experience called life is to understand, I'm going to use the Rudolf Steiner um, way of explaining this, because it, it doesn't matter so much whether, whether you feel it's true or not, but I feel it... it what matters is if it feels right and it takes any further questions about it, if it feels right and makes sense, then it's, it's like a closed book, as it were. So the way Rudolf Steiner talks about this is we are, we are four bodies. So you have your physical body. Then you have your etheric body, your astral body, and your eye organization. So when you go to sleep at night, the physical body is horizontal and not moving. The etheric body is basically the operating system. In the physical sense, it is, uh, its counterpart is the lymphatic system. But it, re it will be controlling all the functions of the body, the organs, all the things you don't have to consciously think about that just just keep operating the entire time between birth and death. Now we're in a realm of duality, just as a little side tangent here. So when you look up at the night sky, you can see the stars clearly, but many people will focus on the stars and forget about what separates so you can distinguish one star from another star. Now, what if you introduce daylight? Now what's happened to the stars? Are they still there? Because now the, the sense of sight can no longer see them because there's too much light that is blocking out the light these stars. So anyway, so you've got your physical body and your etheric body. Now when you sleep, they stay here. They remain. And this is what happens with the physical body. In the biblical reference to this is there is nothing added and nothing taken away. So the physical body is part of this physical realm. It can't go anywhere else, so it remains here. Hence you have human remains. So the other two parts are your astral body. Now that is connected to the nervous system. Now if you look at most animals, they're four-legged, so they have a greater exposure of the spine to the astral. 
So a horse wants to fly, for example, so it will leap about and jump about. Dogs, to a certain degree, behave in the same way, and also cats. But then you've got other animals like cows, who are sort of very earthy creatures, hence the Taurus being an earth sign. So they're more sort of a, a plodding, earthbound animal. And it's even down to the excrement. <laughs> a cow produces a cow pat, whereas a horse will produce dung, which is sort of round like a ball and will roll. And even that reflects this sort of trying to fly aspect. But the human is something very different. So our spine is on a vertical axis, so it has not got quite so much exposure to these astral influences. But clearly there is a uh, interaction and the nervous system is a, uh, is a series of receptors. A lot of people might say, well, yeah, but there's no connection. Well, is there any connection, say, with Wi-Fi? Is there a connection with a, a radio or a television broadcast? It's broadcast through the air. So how is this, these astral influences affecting us, apart from through the air or through the ether? The state beyond the gaseous state of air is ether. Hence, in computers, they use the term as an Ethernet cable. There's, there's so many clues in the, in the languaging of things. Uh, and if you, if you really stop to hear words and the way they're said, as opposed to the way they're spelt, and then have a play with them and look at where the syllable breaks are, so do you hear the word, for example, do you hear the word realize, real lies, or real eyes? Because it's basically exactly the same sound, but it just depends on the emphasis. And where the emphasis is placed as to what people will hear. So then you have the, the human, which makes us distinguishes from the animal kingdom more than anything else is this individual eye organization, this individualized identity. To go through these experiences, you could think of it in a way as being the creator being like the head. And each one of us is a hair on that head, but made, to feel, made to, or encouraged to feel small and insignificant. But it is an inf it's an a, a numerable part that makes up the whole. So the true essence is going down to the root, getting to the root, just like a hair root. And then you come back to the which expressed as I think David Icke um, used this term when he sort of went public and said, "I am the Godhead." When he had that turtle. Um, colour tracksuit appearing on the fact that sort of infamous episode of, of Wogan and to me that makes the, mo the most perfect sense um, how else could you experience this physical world without a physical body but now I say this from from a place of, of personal experience of this and I was reminded of it, I think it was an Alan Watts lecture I heard several months ago. I can't be absolutely certain to be able to quote it, but in that story, there's a man who talks about having a heart attack and he said, I, I'd thoroughly recommend it to, to anybody. Now I had a, a point in my life where I, had, I was losing blood at a very rapid rate and I was going unconscious, and it was like, wow. If this is what death is, this is beautiful. Oh, this is wonderful. Now, I'm not saying that I want, I'm in any hurry to get there because I'm enjoying this experience of life. And I feel this material world reflects the spiritual in a sort of twisted way. 
So, whereas we're here to have an experience and, should we say, upload the experiences to the sort of Godhead, as it were, in this material realm, it's been sort of twisted into data collection. Because it, it is all this talk about artificial intelligence. With the artificial intelligence to study humanity through this technology will build up a profile of what things you like, what things you watch, what things you listen to. It's all sort of being tracked and monitored and the algorithms are building up a character that is based on your preferences or preferences. This is why I feel it's very important to not do any of these online surveys and things because it's voluntarily being tricked into giving information away that is probably works on the same way as when the police will say you have the right, right to remain silent but anything you do say can and will be used against you. You notice the wording. It doesn't say can and, can and will be used in your defence. So they, they tell you the truth. It's just humanity has been trained by an education system to only hear things in particular ways. It's compartmentalised information, basically. In the same way that those that are involved in something like NASA, they just, or even, let's take, let's take a, a more universal example, the banking industry. So the employees that are at the um, customer service desks and things, they're not in on it. They're not part of a conspiracy. They're just doing a job and they're earning money in that job. But they're not um, evil or anything. They're there's, a, there's, a, there's many layers to these things, and I feel you'd have to go a long way up through the, the banking world to the very top of it, and then you're still not going to be anywhere near the top of the pyramid of this sort of control si or operating system of this reality, that these so-called controllers. But what control do they really have? Increasingly, in, in the business world, you have um, the term human resources. And as beyond that, it's in terms of being part of a nation, you're classed as a resource. And that's saying about where the attention goes, the energy flows. So these scripts that are put out are to get your attention. So there's something going on in the unseen that is not physical, not tangible, that is harvesting human energy, or what is called loosh. I can't help, but this just popped into my, my mind. Have you got any loose change? So loosh. It's, it's, um, and most of these scripts are all fear-based what-ifs with no foundation of truth behind them. There's many phases of and ways of doing trickery. How, how can we know any information that, we're, that comes through the media in any form to be absolutely true? Is there anything can, you can put your hand on your heart and say, yes, I know this to be true? Because most of the things are always somewhere else in the world that you can't verify. Unless you've got a trusted, well, I'd say you need three sources or three witnesses. So for whatever happens in anywhere in the world, it, we'd, we'd need three people in that local to that area to be able to say, yes, it's true or no, it's not true. But even then, it, it comes down to discernment. How well do you know that other person that you're speaking to, are they giving you true information? What they witness, is, is it a true picture of what's really going on? 
even if you think in terms of the military, it's based on intelligence. Yes, there may be people firing at you from over the other side of a hill, for example. But it's all determined on this supply of information called intelligence. And is there ever any questioning of, is that information correct? And what about the group that is firing? What have they been told and what sort sort of uh, armed force are they an opposing armed force or have they been given information and been told misinformation this is very much how this whole reality works it's it's all trickery and illusion and getting humanity to voluntarily give away its power so easily and that is a repeat thing over and over again. The more you sort of look into these things, the more you'll find that it is all based on trickery. It's like, well, if you go along with this, we'll allow you to do that. It's like, well, hang on a minute. What do you mean you'll allow me to do that? But by the looks of it, the being allowed or not allowed, there's, there's already rules and restrictions that have been imposed upon me before I even start. <laughs> So, it, it's all trickery, the whole thing. But it is, it seems to be very much, it's wherever you focus your attention. There's a certain event that's big news at the moment um, in the sort of Middle East area. That's all I'm going to say about it. But ironically, had I not seen mention of it on True Love Channel, I would have known absolutely nothing about it. And it wouldn't have even entered my mind. But it's another one of these scripts, which is a topic for another discussion at another time. Because history repeats itself, so suffice to say that If a particular group was claiming persecution, I would expect that story to come round in an updated scenario and replayed again. Or shall we say that it may be just paving the way to set and pedestalise Albert Pike as being a prophet. If his prediction for one and two when exactly, as he said, 43 years before the first big event. And the second event, which is even further into the future from when this is outlined, also comes true, with with the result also accurately predicted. Then I will be looking and thinking, well, the odds are that number three will go the same way as predicted there. And that very much seems to be unfolding at the moment. Food for thought there, I think.